Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 25th November 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested, you may visit our website www.superiorprofit.co to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help in your trading. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we look at key commodities, oil and gold using Q technical charts. Then we will look into the broad market analyze it using indices, broad market internals, and broad market ETFs. Then we'll drill down from broad market to sectors and industries. We'll analyze them using performance graphs, ranking, and heat map table. Along the way, we may go through some of the posts in our tradings community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. This week I am traveling. I have access to internet, however the internet is slow. So I will make a shortened weekly market roundup for this week. Let us start with gold. We are looking at gold ETF GLD using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. Together, we call this at a glance template. This is the template that helps us decide whether there is a trading opportunity at the right edge of the chart. Gold gave us a long signal on this cyan color candle. At that time, the stop loss was just below recent low and target could be either once the upper boundary lines were hit or once the risk distance was covered. Risk distance was the distance between stop loss and the entry price. And on this candle, that risk distance was already covered. So a fast trader could have booked profit on this candle. Other traders are continuing to hold the long position, waiting for this price level to be hit. We are now looking at US oil, USO, using the same at a glance template. Weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side, daily hop on chart on the right hand side. The optimal long entry signal in USO came on this cyan color candle. The profit target of upper boundary was hit in one or two trading days. So partial profit could be booked at that time and the remaining position could be held. If a trader was using swing lows to move stop loss, then once this swing low was created, stop would be moved to this price level. Since then price went up, so the remaining position could still be held. This way of moving stock to successive swing lows is usually applied by longer term traders. Swing traders who try to enter long near value area and book profit at upper boundary 
they may not wait for the swing low to happen before moving stop. Instead, they could use the Q protection signal to move stop as the price went up. Let me move to Q hop off template, which has the Q protection signal to illustrate this. Here we are looking at US oil using Q hop off template daily chart. The optimal long entry was on this candle. Partial profit was booked at upper boundary. And after that, as US oil went up, the stop loss would be moved to the Q protection signal. And the stop would be hit finally at this level by this candle. So the entry price would have been closing of this candle. Initial profit target would be at upper boundary and the remaining position would exit with stop profit order at this level. That trade would also be significantly profitable. For longer term traders, entry would be at the same price point. Partial profit could again be booked at upper boundary but stop would not be moved until a swing low is made, which happened at this point, and the stop would then be moved to this price level. After that price went up, so longer term traders could still be holding US oil long position. After studying the gold and US oil ETFs, let's have a look at broad market internals. Every week we studied broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index weekly chart and NYSE composite index weekly chart. From the index candle charts, we can see that both of them are in strong uptrend. NASDAQ made another new all time high. NYSE went up, however, could not make a new all time high. Over longer period, though the indices are making all time highs, the internals are not able to surpass previous peaks. Therefore, over longer period, the internals continue to be weak. For this specific week, one, two, three, four, four internals went down and these two internals, that is the new high lows for both NASDAQ and NYSE went up. All of the six internals ended in the positive. In summary, we conclude that the indices continue to be in uptrend over longer term, the internals continue to be weak. And for this specific week, internals are bullish. This same bullishness is displayed in the broad market ETFs as well. We are looking at SPY using at a glance template. SPY made a new all time high. It broke above the watermark resistance in the weekly chart. In the daily chart also, it broke above the watermark resistance and continued to go up after that. In this area, SPY made lower low. Therefore, over short term period, it was not in uptrend anymore. It made a lower low, but now it made a higher high. These are uncertain chart patterns without any clear trend for swing traders. Therefore, we would like to stay away from taking any swing trade in SPY right now. QQQ made another new all time high. In fact, it has made new all time high 
for successive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. QQQ is clearly outperforming all the other broad market ETFs. QQQ did display a bearish headwind signal last week, though there was no bearish headwind trade setup. After that, it broke above the watermark resistance level and continued to go higher. It is already close to upper boundary and there is no trade signal at the right edge of the chart. DIA Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF is the only broad market ETF that could not make new all time high. It closed very close to the watermark resistance level in both weekly and daily charts. In the daily, it is bounded by watermark resistance at the top and memory support at the bottom. Unless it breaks out of this pattern, the direction of dia is not clear. We may wait for a breakout and subsequent low entry opportunity before taking any swing trade. The last broad market ETF that we study is IWM. This week, IWM also made a new all time high. It broke above the watermark resistance in weekly. For many weeks in this period, IWM was underperforming the market. That was clearly visible from the relative performance line declining. However, since this candle, the indecisive shape candle, IWM recovered sharply. In this area, IWM had displayed lower lows. And as it shoot up, it created higher highs. Lower lows and higher highs are uncertain areas without any clear trend. Therefore, we will stay away from taking any trend following trade in IWM at the right edge of the chart. All the broad market ETFs went up quite strongly that shows the bullishness of the market as was shown by the broad market internal studies as well. However, one thing to be cautious of is the extremely low activity in the weekly chart for all the broad market ETFs. We can see that IWM had so little weekly activity that it is virtually invisible. Let's look at some other ETFs. QQQ weekly activity was also extremely low. SPY weekly activity was so low that it is practically invisible. DIA which did not make new all time high had relatively higher activity but still low relative to previous weeks when we see this pattern that multiple broad market etfs are breaking out and making new all-time highs which happened for spy qqq and iwm however activity is extremely low then we may take the breakouts with a pinch of salt. Wait for more bullish signal before taking a long trade and also wait for a low risk entry opportunity. While the low activity shows reason for caution, we have to say that the markets are clearly bullish in terms of price move, both for the indices as well as for the broad market ETFs. And this bullishness was visible in the sector industry analysis as well.
Every week we study 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar presents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line indicates that the sector gained and any bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates that the sector declined. After many months, this is the first week when all the 11 sectors gained, displaying an overall strong market. Consumer staples and consumer discretionary continues to do well. These are now up for all the review periods. There may be low risk optimal valuation by opportunities in these sectors. Telecommunication services is another sector that is going up after a prolonged decline. You may look for bottom catching opportunities in this sector. When we look at the industries with best performance, we see that best performing industries are spread across multiple sectors. One that may catch your attention is wireless telecommunication service. This was lagging for many months and now showing signs of reversal. You may look for optimal value by opportunity in this industry. What about industries with worst performance? All the worst performing industries have been worst ranking industries for quite a long time. None of these industries are especially appealing when looked through QH ranking and heat map table. Let's have a look at the QH table. Every time we open QH, it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly periods from month one to month 12, and then more frequently over recent periods of 10 days, five days, two days, and one day in real time. For every review period, it assigns a rank of one and cyan color to the strongest performing sector or industry and a large number magenta color to the weakest sector industry. It also applies a color gradient to all the sector industries in between. The result is a sector and industry ranking and heat map table that instantly tells us over our primary five days period, which sector industry is strong. Telecom is the strongest sector this week. Which one is weak? Consumer staples. Which sector was weak before and turning strong now? Telecom. It was magenta before and is turning cyan and it is gaining strength very fast. It improved rank from 11 over one month period to rank one over 10 days and then over five days it is holding on to that rank. For trade entry, our focus is primarily on the rank and color over the five day period. If we want to analyze the industries, we can go to the industry analyze tab, sort the industries from weakest to strongest. So we have all these weak industries and we see that the top 10, that is the worst performing 10 industries are magenta for many months. That's why I mentioned that they are already weak for 
significant period of time the optimal time to enter short in them might have already passed we might still look for swing short long term short opportunities might have passed because the color is deep magenta over the primary five days period that is bearish or underperforming industries we are not going to look for long trades in these industries every week we also look at industries with biggest rank gain and biggest rank decline usually they tend to be the industries with best or worst performance in subsequent weeks this is the closest you may go towards predicting what is going to happen in the industries in coming week this week three of the rank improving industries are related to oil and gas sector and three are related to metals and mining oil and gas storage and transportation integrated oil and gas oil and gas consumable fuels these three are related to oil gas and diversified metals and mining metal and mining and steel are related to metal and mining of these diversified metals and mining is showing steady rank growth in q edge you may look for long opportunities in this industry let's have a look at q edge in q edge in addition to analyzing the industries by performance over weekly or monthly periods we may also analyze them according to their pace of moving up or down we are looking for industries that gained rank quickly for that you may sort the industries by the pace column five days is the primary period from smallest to largest and instantly we have these industries which improved rank quickly diversified metal and mining is one industry that was magenta before and gradually improving rank over five days it has a rank of six pretty strong rank and a color of cyan so we are going to look for only swing long opportunity in this industry because this industry is gradually and steadily gaining strength you may look for swing long opportunity as well as longer term buy opportunity the last item that we study is the industries with biggest rank drop five of the rank decliners belong to consumer discretionary sector and two belong to consumer staple sector both of these sectors were trying to go up from long declines you may see if this was a temporary setback or if these industries fall down again this consumer discretionary sector industries are apparel retail laser products specialized consumer services footwear and specialty retail and the consumer staples industries that dropped in ranked heavily are food retail and hypermarkets and super centers among these hypermarkets and super centers had stellar ranking for many months and now had a sudden large drop in rank you may be cautious of long positions in this industry and may look for shorts on fundamentally weak stocks that you can drill down using qh and if you have a low risk entry opportunity using q charts let's have a quick look at the biggest rank decliners and identify hypermarkets and super centers in that in qa to find out the industries that dropped in rank fast we can sort by the pace column from largest to smallest and instantly we have the industries that dropped suddenly hypermarkets and supercenter is one that was cyan that is strong 
outperforming others for long time with a rank of 19 over 10 days period but over five days period it dropped in rank heavily and suddenly from 19 to 153 you may drill down into this industry stocks and see if there is an overvalued stock fundamentally weak stock that is also at an optimal short point on q charts overall the market continues to be bullish this bullishness is visible from broad market internal analysis from the broad market etf analysis as well as the sector analysis in spite of this bullishness and multiple etfs breaking out to new all-time highs there are two reasons to be cautious one is that the weekly activity in multiple etfs were extremely low and the second is that none of the etfs are giving low risk entry opportunity looking at this market if we are holding profitable long positions there is no need to exit them one may put stop in place using q protection signal to protect profit and try to let profit run if the market continues to go up as the market continues to be bullish it may not be the right time to start shorting stocks that is all that i wanted to share in today's session thanks to all of you for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably